Hey designers, in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how I use the app Procreate on my iPad Pro with Apple Pencil to design thumbnails for my YouTube videos. You've probably heard of Procreate before because it is the most popular drawing app on the iPad and you can do many different things in it. I like to use it just for drawing, just for doing some hand lettering, having some fun, making things, but the main way that it comes in as part of my design process and workflow is for designing my YouTube thumbnails. So I'm gonna show you that today, I'm gonna show you my process and maybe you'll pick up some tips and tricks for your own Procreate workflow. So here we are in Procreate and as you can see, there's lots of files here of previous thumbnails, but I'm gonna walk you through my process as I create a thumbnail for a new video that's coming out. Actually, it'll be old by the time this video goes up, but whatever. I keep all of my YouTube files in Dropbox um, I have an editor who helps me with videos. Whenever I'm filming, I'll like pose for a still. So she'll export the, that as a frame for me to choose from. So I come into my folder for that video. Um, and here are my thumbnail options for it. And I think I'm gonna go with this one here. So I just download that and it opens up as a file. And because the, this has been exported as a frame from a video, it's already at the right size of 1920 by 1080 for a thumbnail. So here I am shrugging in a classic YouTube thumbnail pose. Um, you might've noticed that all of my YouTube thumbnails have a border around them. Now I made those borders originally in Procreate, but I don't draw them out new every time. Um, but I'll just show you some of my favorite brushes that I use to create those borders. I have a set of imported brushes here from my friend Ian Barnard. He has an online store where he sells Procreate brushes and other things that you can use with Procreate as well. Some really cool fonts too. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. All of these imported brushes here are from him and they've all got a really nice sort of like slightly grungy feel to them. And I just think they're really cool. And I tend to uh, gravitate towards these whenever I'm doing things in Procreate where I want like a brushy feel to it. So I made all of the borders for my YouTube videos using that, but I exported them as PNGs. So that then whenever I wanna add it into a new thumbnail, I'm not drawing the border each time. What I actually do is go add, I go insert file, and then I come out into my YouTube folder, into my channel branding, thumbnail frames. So you have my three colors that I use for thumbnails here. Um, I have them in Dropbox rather than in, like just on my iPad, because I found that for some reason, adding a PNG from my photos on my iPad would fill in the background as black and it wouldn't be transparent, which is really frustrating. So yeah, Dropbox it is. So I just add that frame and it fits perfectly in the space. Then something I like to do is sort of have myself interact with the frame a little. So I go into my eraser tool and I just sort of like draw around my head. It's like a really rough masking. I could do this much neater in Photoshop for sure, but you know, this is a YouTube video thumbnail and we don't need to take that much time with it. So yeah, I just kind of like how that looks. I feel like it's more interactive and there's more dimension to the thumbnail when I do that. Um, next, let's add some text. So um, as you can see in here in my layers panel, I have two layers so far. One is, well, three, because there's a background, but you know what I mean. One is the photo, one is the thumbnail frame. And so then I'm gonna add a new layer here to start putting my text on. Now, the, the brush that I like to use to write with is in the inking section, and it's the Studio Pen. Um, I think I might have changed some settings from how it comes, I don't know. So I'll just have this on screen here. You can take a screenshot or whatever and copy it. Then I'm gonna come in here and pick a color, and usually I will write my text in white and then have a colored background behind it. So just pick a white. As you can see here though, I've got lots of different color palettes. I've got my Charlie Marie brand colors. I have some of the ConvertKit colors in here um, for whenever I do something for work. So that's really handy that you can save different color palettes um, for different, different reasons. And then now I think about what I'm gonna title this video. I think I'm gonna call this video something like how to make a product animation when you're not a motion designer. Um, something like that anyway, the thumbnail. So I'm just gonna set about writing it now. Let's test how thick that is. That feels too thin to me. So I'm just gonna use this slider here to move it up. Too thick, let's go somewhere in the middle. Okay, so I put the making Anne on a separate layer cause um, I'm trying to keep it separate in case I wanna move it around a little. I can come up here to this little arrow icon and just sort of like shift it however I want. 
Um, so it's just handy if it's on a separate layer. Now I'm going to make a layer behind each of these layers <laughs> to put my colored background behind. So I'm going to go in and pick a green for behind the animation. Just make this a bit thicker. Actually, let's change brushes as well. Let's go for something a bit grungier. I'm going to use Barry. Get old Barry. Then I'm going to come in here. See, I'm on this layer that's sitting behind animation. And I'm just going to, whoop, that's way too thick. By the way, you can double tap on the screen to um, undo, which I think is incredibly helpful. Then I'm going to come in here and draw behind this. I'm being really rough with this because it's kind of like it's the aesthetic that I'm going for. The brush itself is rough, so the drawing and like everything doesn't have to be perfectly even either, which is nice. Okay, so see how I came to the edge of the purple here? I'm feeling that it's a little bit close to the edge. So what I'm going to do is group these together by sliding along on that and clicking group. So now this uh, animation text is in one group for me to move together. I'll click on this arrow and just move it along ever so slightly. Do I want to have it lower maybe? Maybe. Actually, I'm kind of liking it there underneath my hands. I don't know. Let's, do, let's keep it here for now. Um, that's the beauty of it, is that you can move around the pieces. And then for behind the making a, I'm actually going to use pink for this. I like to use different colors. Do the same thing here, we will group them. And sort of move it down slightly. And then sometimes I like to write like an aside, um, you know, in parentheses underneath. So I'm going to click on this dark color and come back to my pen, make it a little bit thinner. And I'm going to put, oops, forgot to make a layer. So it's good that it'll want you make a layer for this part. Oop, way too thick. I just feel like this dark text sort of catches your eye a bit, makes you look twice. Something I like to do as well though is make my white text stand apart from the background. Um, and I'm actually feeling like I want my background to be thicker, so I'm just going to go in and add a bit more in here. Make the brush bigger. Yeah, we'll put that in a block instead. A bit more on my green too. Okay, so what I was saying, I like to make the white text sit apart from the background. If I was in Photoshop, I would just add a drop shadow, but um, there's a little hack for how I do it in Procreate. So first of all, I'm going to duplicate this layer, duplicate this layer. Then I'm going to take the layer of the one behind. I'm going to lower the brightness all the way down, um, which sort of makes it, if I move it, makes it dark, you see. And then I'm going to get my blur tool and I'm just going to slide it along. So you just drag your pencil along the screen and it starts blurring out. So when I get to about here-ish, that's when it's looking drop shadowy. Um, it's a little bit dark though, so we'll just come in here and lower the opacity somewhat. And there, can you see the difference between the making an and the animation? How this one like feels more active and um, has more depth to it? So let's do the same thing for the animation one. I definitely feel like if you don't lower the opacity, it looks really cheesy. It's like way too dark. So I do think this is a, an important step to do as well. And then I feel like I want this just to sit, I don't know, more involved somehow. I think I want to change up the layer order here. So to change that, you just sort of click on one and drag it and move it. Now animation is in front. There we go. I feel like that works. Sometimes I'll also like want to add some little doodles elsewhere um, in, in the piece. So maybe I'll take green, take my ink brush and do something like a doot 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 doot. I don't know, just think it looks cute. <laughs> For this thumbnail tool, the last touch I'm going to add is the After Effects logo in the corner so that people know what software I'm using in the video. One thing that um, I learned the hard way when you're uh, resizing something, I want to click uniform to keep it equal and so I don't accidentally stretch this logo out and make it look shit. <laughs> there we go. I think that works as my thumbnail. The next thing I just do is go share JPEG and I'm going to save it into Dropbox into my um, animation folder.
there we go. Now I can access it on my computer and add it to my YouTube video. I think Procreate is a great app. It's really fun to play around with all the different brushes and um, make things, you know, but it's also for me a really quick way for me to make a thumbnail for my YouTube video. I find it very easy to just whip one up and I can work much faster than if I was perhaps laying it out in Photoshop. And there's just something about being able to draw on it, to be able to mask quickly just by drawing around my head, you know, um, it all works out really well for me. So there we go, that's how I make a thumbnail for my YouTube videos. This is a process I've been using for several years now and um, honestly I just find it really quick to get the work done. If you've got any questions about the process, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you click that red button, turn it into a gray button. I think that's what happens because I make new videos about design every single week and I would love to have you back here for the next one. Thanks for joining everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.